Wow. Okay. Lawlers, welcome back to another beginner's guide. This time we're going to be covering off Oriana, uh, one of my favorite control mages in the mid lane. Kind of a good blend of poke and CC and AoE damage. So we're going to talk about a few parts of her kit here. We're going to start off with the runes. We'll go into the build. We'll talk about her abilities, some very basic combos, and then we'll round out the guide doing a little quick lane phase tutorial so you guys have an idea of how to play her in your games and hopefully pick up some wins. So to start off with Oriana, obviously like we talked about, bit of a control mage, so her strengths would be like wave clear, damage, she's obviously ability power focused, um, she has a lot of utility in her kit with slows and you know displacements and all kinds of good stuff. Weaknesses as is with most control mages, very immobile and very easily bursted down, doesn't have the biggest health bar or defensive stats. So knowing that, uh, runes with Orianna, you want to run phase rush. These are the highest win rate builds right now in runes for Orianna. So phase rush, hitting an enemy champion with three attacks or abilities within four seconds grants a big burst of move speed. So if you do this uh, in the mid lane, not only can you hopefully avoid some ganks, but in later on in kind of team fights and skirmishes, you can dodge out uh, getting focused down by either the front line or the enemy control mage or even an assassin. So really, really important rune on Orianna. The next one here, mana flow band, pretty standard with any type of AP mage, you want to stack up that mana flow band and get all that extra mana. Transcendence for the ability haste and cooldowns and then gathering storm so as the games go later on you have more ability power uh, with each passing 10 minute interval. So you know Oriana does spike harder as the game goes. She definitely scales up quite nicely so this kind of works well with her kit and her item set to really let her pop off as the game goes later and later. Secondary uh, is a little bit more personal choice. Again, these are just the highest win rates right now. So you have Magical Footwear and Biscuit Delivery just for some of that uh, free boots at the 12 minute mark and then some extra sustain in lane. In terms of items, what you're going to want to run with Oriana, I feel like the Doran's Ring starts the best. It's a good mix of ability, power, some extra health, uh, attacks deal an additional 5 physical damage to minions. Oriana's already really, really good at basic attacks and last hitting on minions because of her passive. This just makes it that much easier. And then, of course, with the drain, passive killing a minion restores some mana. And if you can't restore any mana, you get some health instead. So just, you know, Doran's Ring, pretty standard, and then you get the health pod. So you'll pick that up in most of your games. The rush item, the mythic, is Luden's Tempest. You want that big bursty ability power item with uh, with Oriana. It also comes with 600 mana and 20 ability haste. These are all good things for a control mage. You can spam your abilities. You have the huge mana pool to back that up. And then it comes with a little bit of magic penetration which helps you scale into that mid and late game. Tier of the Goddess will eventually build into your Archangel Staff, which is your second core item. And then of course with the boots you're going to get the sork shoes so if we just add some gold to our our pockets here um, essentially your core build with Oriana is going to look like do we need more gold why can't we buy the boots oh because we have magical footwear um, sork shoes and then the Luden's Tempest and Archangel staff so that's your core build that's going to set you up to be really really powerful kind of around that mid game mark 15 to 25 minutes depending on how fast you can get to those items and have a great great chance of carrying your games so knowing the build knowing the runes we're going to jump into the river here and just kind of talk through our abilities and some basic combos against an enemy practice dummy Okay, so let's do a quick rundown of Oriana's abilities. There's actually a few things that some beginners might miss, and even intermediate and advanced Ori players sometimes forget when you're using these abilities in your trades or in lane. So the clockwork windup, that's her passive. Oriana's abilities originate from her ball, so her whole kit is originated around this ball that floats around her. Um, the Oriana's ball automatically returns to her if she's too far away from it. So we're going to talk about that later on after we pick up our first point in Q. But the other part of this passive that's actually really important to Oriana is that her attacks deal additional 40 magic damage. Subsequent attacks against the same target deal additional magic damage. That means that if you auto attack a champion, for example, that's 44 damage, the next one is going to start to deal a little bit more and more and more. 
Okay, so subsequent attacks against the same target within four seconds deal additional magic damage. So if you can auto attack people with Oriana and keep autoing them, it's just going to ramp up your damage on them and really start to burn them and hurt them for more and more damage. So Oriana is really good at early stages, obviously more so than later stages with this passive, you know, later on what's 8 damage or 16 damage, doesn't really matter. But early in the lane, it does help you kind of get some of that control in the first, you know, one to six levels. Okay, the first ability you're going to pick up with Oriana is going to be her Q. This is command attack. So Oriana commands her ball to move to an area, deal some magic damage uh, to anything that it passes through. As it passes through more enemies, it's going to deal less and less damage. So you can see here with the big blue circle around us, that's the cast range. If you press Q, the ball will travel all the way out there, deal a good chunk of damage, and kind of hang out. Again, her kit is centered around this ball, and that's how you can kind of control areas of the lane you could leave that ball there and use some of your other abilities to interact with that area of the map uh, and we'll get into that before we do you can see this blue arrow that's your indicator of how far away from the ball you can move before it returns to you so blue is okay yellow is like hey you're kind of getting to the spot where you might have to take that ball back and then red is you can see ball comes back to you so generally you know the blue the yellow doesn't really matter if you just keep an eye out for where it's red if you want the ball to come back to you and you're red then all you have to do is step a little bit further back and it's probably gonna fly back to you if you don't want that ball just make sure you walk back towards where it's sitting so the ball doesn't return to you you know as a beginner this doesn't really matter that much you'll have to walk pretty far away for the ball to come back to you, you can see this distance here it's still sitting so just know that you know as a beginner your Q basically determines where the ball is gonna sit if you run a screen away it's gonna come back to you and you won't be able to cast your other abilities around that area but generally if you're using your cue to position that ball and you're kind of hanging out in lane it's going to sit where it is okay so Q moves the ball deals some damage second ability you're going to pick up is going to be command dissonance Oriana commands her ball to release an electric pulse deals 200 magic damage to the surrounding enemies so you can see between the Q and the W the W actually deals more magic damage and it also has a secondary effect of slowing or speeding up enemies or allies accordingly. So what I mean by deal some damage with the pulse is you can see wherever the ball's sitting, once you press W, it's going to send out this pulse of damage. And the, the radius there is the, the radius that'll deal that damage in. So if we land the ball on an enemy champion, for example, press W, not only will that Q damage them, but then the W damage as well and that takes off a very good chunk of health okay this is pretty much the combo with Oriana I mean if you can weave in auto attacks there as well that's great but the combo with Ori is if you hit your Q try and hit your W as well you can do a little bit of a quick cast like you can press W while the ball's moving and it will come out where the ball lands so if you know you press Q W while it's traveling the W is going to come out as soon as the ball reaches its end location so it's a little bit of a faster way to maybe sneak that W you and without them expecting it but as a beginner I would more recommend that you guys just wait at least for the ball to make sure it hits the enemy champion as you're learning your range and then press W on them again if you have managed to hit them with the ball with the Q the the radius of damage on the W is actually so large you probably won't miss it so with Orion it's just all about getting used to your cast ranges on your Q and knowing the radius of your W um, so that you can land all of that damage from the Q and the W so what I mean by the cast range and and the damage radius of it is even the Q for example where the ball lands has that small circle that it'll damage them so even if you land the ball right next to this target it technically doesn't have to hit them to deal that damage so the more comfortable you get with knowing that radius the more you can sneak that ball into targets and damage them when they may not think they're actually gonna get hit by it and of course once you do that one you land that W and you chunk them up pretty hard okay so that's really the meat and potatoes of Oriana's damage other than that you have a cool little command protect that you can use so the passive of this is the ball adds six armor and six magic resist to the allied champion that it's attached to so a little bit beefed up stats on the armor and the magic resist the active is it commands the ball to attach to an allied champion and gives them a pretty chunky shield like 169 shield for 2.5 seconds so it's actually significant you could think of this like a Lux W shield almost in a way um, the added effect here though is again enemies that the ball passes through on the way to attaching 
into somebody will also deal some damage. So here, just to show you an example, you can shield yourself by either clicking E while your cursor is hovering over you or just holding down the Alt key and then pressing E. That ball is going to come, it's going to shield you, and it's also going to damage any enemy it passes through. So you can see each of our abilities, the Q, the W, the E, kind of is advanced to use on its own. There's a lot of cool little tricks um, to using each ability. We actually didn't even cover a second aspect of the W, which is the slow and the, the move speed in detail. So we'll do that now. You can see that when you press W, this air area here that has the blue clockwork kind of dial rotating. As that dial's on the ground rotating, you have movement speed through that area and enemies are slowed through that area. Okay, So if you were getting ganked, you could just press W and get that little quick burst of move speed to run away. All right, So make sure you remember that, that you have movement speed through that pulsing area of the W. So even if you were fighting right here, for example, and you were really up close because it's a Z and they jumped on you, and you Q W, you could run away through that shield or through that uh, pulsed area really, really fast, and then they would be slow trying to follow you. So it's a great way to play in the mini trades and also avoid some ganks. All right. So now that we have our, our three abilities, a very basic way to trade with Orianna is obviously to weave in as many autos as you can for that passive damage to stack up. Use that Q, use the W, and if trades go really long, you can pull the ball through them again to get a shield and also damage them. So ideally that ball pulls through them, so you put the ball slightly behind and it pulls through. Okay? If you pull the ball back to you and it doesn't pass through the enemy, you can see it's not going to deal that damage. So the perfect trade, if you can do it, is obviously to Q behind them, W, auto attack, pull the ball back, and then you have that nice shield, probably going to win all those trades. Okay? Downside to this is using all the abilities using all these abilities is going to suck up your mana pool and basically drain it out very very quickly so this is why you need to rush that lost chapter as your first item into the Ludens Tempest as Oriana. Mana is key to her, ability cooldown is key so that's going to be your rush rush item. Okay? Alright guys, so that's basic abilities there, levels 1 to 3 that's going to carry you all the way up to level 6. So let's learn our 6 now which is our ultimate and that is Command Shockwave. So this is our ultimate. This is an amazing ultimate because it has area of effect damage and displacement. It can turn the tide of team fights completely. Once you become level 6 with Orianna, in kind of that mid-game scenario in 3v3s all the way up to 5v5s, you are probably the biggest threat on your team because if you land that ball on you know, 2 plus enemy members, it's going to deal a lot of damage and it's going to displace them. So you can see here with the animation, basically what it's saying is she commands her ball to unleash a massive shockwave, it deals a huge chunk of magic damage to nearby enemies and also knocks them in the direction of the ball. Okay, so that knocking of the, them into the direction of the ball is basically your crowd control, you know, it displaces them, they can't cast anything, they can't move, they're basically sitting ducks for the duration of that displacement. So you can see here if the ball's sitting behind them, the radius of the R is pretty generous, like in this case it almost covers the whole width of the river. If you press R, pulls them in the direction of the ball right and deals a huge chunk of damage all right so huge in team fights if there was multiple people stacking up here let's say we we're gonna fight for this Baron we had a few allies on our side we had a few enemies on the other side you know one of these is a front liner they go in cause some havoc you Q R it's gonna pull them all in you can follow that up with a W pull the shield back to yourself deal even more damage massive chunks of damage with Orianna. You should be topping the damage charts in all of your games as Orianna if you're playing her well and landing some of those key ultimates whenever it's off cooldown. Okay. In terms of maxing abilities, you're going to max that Q first. It's just the lowest cost, most spammable way to damage with Orianna, and it also makes that ball easily positionable by you throughout the lane phase and into the mid stages of the game. So you want to max out that Q first, then you're going to follow that up by maxing out your W, and then your E last. So a pretty simple order. There are certain scenarios where if you feel like you're against an assassin early and you just don't have the greatest spacing and you feel like you get chunked out too easily or you know again the classic Talon or, or Zed level 6 all in you could put a few extra points in your command protect to get that shield up a little bit more um, it's not going to really you know sh 
block all the damage, but it might be enough to, as you're learning Oriana, kind of negate some of the damage that's going to be coming in and keep you a bit healthier in lane. I've played against a few Ori's that uh, rush armor uh, through a Seeker's Arm Guard, for example, and max out the E first, and they're just, they seem unkillable if you're an attack damage assassin in mid lane. You just can't damage them. So um, that is a way you can play. It's kind of off meta, but fun. And again, if you're playing for that big game spike, you'll still spike eventually by getting all your ability power items and getting points into your Q and your W, okay? So guys, it's really all about that Q placement, following it up with Ws in the early game, weaving in autos. If you're going to get damage coming back at you, pull that shield back, make sure you're using your E to block some of that damage, and then later in those team fights, even if you're kind of hiding in the bushes, you could leave that ball out there. You can see I can leave the ball even all the way out in that river there and still be over here, and then you could just press R, W, pull the shield back to you, do a bunch of damage, okay? It's all about hitting those those W's, those Q's, and those R's. All right, it'll take some time, but once you get used to it, it's pretty disgusting. Cool, so that's everything in terms of the abilities and some basic combos and things to think about with the abilities. We're gonna jump into lane phase now and do a quick guide on how you wanna play the early lane phase. So minions are on the way here. We've already leveled up our Q. That's going to be our first ability and the one that we max out. Um, we're going to use that in lane to try and poke and hopefully kind of chunk the enemy down with some of our autos through a passive. That's your early lane phase plan. You do not want to push the wave early as Orianna, so don't just start attacking or queuing through the entire minion wave. You don't really have an escape and you're very vulnerable to kind of those early level two and level three ganks. So just play it cool, auto attack, use your Q. You can kind of use your Q to clear out everything if you can. Or just use those autos. And then again, using that passive, just autoing as many times as you can. If these guys want to sit here and let you auto them, you will probably win if you dodge out whatever their Q ability is early in the lane phase and then just keep poking them down. Okay, so here you can see we've kind of shifted back to not pushing the wave, just last hitting. Orion is really good at last hitting because of the extra damage on it. If he steps up, we'll just try and auto attack as many times as we can and weave those cues in as well. We're still not really concerned about pushing the wave yet. If he steps up to last hit, we're gonna throw that Q out, do an auto, move back, make sure we don't take too much damage, and then we'll come back in and keep autoing if we can, okay? So auto Q, that's a very easy trade off the start. You can see Galio's base numbers are pretty good, so again, learning the range of that Q and not taking too much damage from it while you go in to, to land it on the enemy champs. If you can't grab every last hit, that's fine. We're just going to try and make sure now we use our E and our W in these combos as well if we need to. So he's going to walk right over the ball. We'll auto attack in W. This is a perfect situation for Oriana early on. We don't have the wave pushing. We're picking up all of our last hits, no problem. And this guy is going to be in a world of damage here if he steps over our ball in a little bit. So just focusing on these last hits. I don't want to step up and auto him in this massive minion wave because unfortunately that means that we're going to probably take a bunch of minion aggro. You can use your shield like this if you want to dodge some of that minion aggro. And then just again grabbing those last hits. You can use a Q in short range like that to help you grab some of those last hits. As we get closer to level 6, this lane phase will become more interesting as Oriana. We can step up now, land a Q, again using that shield to block some damage, auto attacking when we can, as many autos as possible, and just trying not to shove that wave. Once we become a little bit more set with a larger mana pool, we can start to shove the waves harder and also poke the enemies under turret by spamming Q and W, but early on it's a little bit more effective. Whoops, a little bit of a weird lag, misclick there. It's a little bit more effective just to let the wave hang out on your side. Okay, so here we can shove this through. Now that we have a big wave building, we can shove this with W. That really does help your last hitting ability. And if the Galio wants to step in, we can follow that up with some Q and autos. You can see from a few combos, we did run Oom. This is why you run Teleport with Orianna. So eventually when you stack up a few waves and you know you're gonna try and get a recall to get that mana pool stack back up, then you can just do that really quick with a recall and then a TP back to lane to keep the pressure on. I think we might be able to walk back in this case unless this Galio shoves this out. This wave may connect before you can shove it. I'm not sure. 
either way you could use teleport there to get back in if you wanted to I think we're gonna be okay in this case we shouldn't lose too many minions so we're just gonna walk it back but that just means we can use the teleport later in this lane phase to come back with the full mana pool lost chapter once you get that is really when you can start to spam your abilities on the enemy champion so here again just back to holding the lane using that W when we can autoing him when we can and then we can start to use our shield as well just to help us block some of that damage Gallo is actually one of the tougher champs just because of his magic uh, damage shield and innate tankiness. So here, again, I don't really want to shove unless I have to. If he steps up, we'll use that Q. We'll use W if he sits in the ball. And we'll just get ready to maybe shove this in if it's going to have to shove. Just queuing him again, slowly poking him down here we have our level six now so now we can just do the full combo on him if we want follow it up with autos should get the kill now right so that's really kind of you can see there how quick our power spike is apparent as soon as we hit level six that's really what you want to be waiting for before you go too crazy in lane um, it just is so much better for for timing off your damage and landing your damage because of the displacement from your R. So really once you get that, that's when you can get a little bit more kind of ballsy in lane and go for some of those big all-ins. But early on, before that, unless you're in a really favorable matchup, you just try and land a few autos, a few Qs, a few Ws. Nothing crazy that's going to put you at risk of being oom um or really low health from trades. And you can see here now, when he comes back to lane, just again trying to shove these lanes if they walk between you and your ball you can shield and pull it back for some extra damage we have a few potions so we can pop those now and if he wants to stay here same kind of a thing so you pull the ball back it damages him you can Q W again you can see how much damage he's taken now by being a little bit too aggro this is when Ori starts to become a little bit suffocating because you can just keep queuing and Wing you can even pull it back to get some health or sorry, some health, some shield, and just kind of rinse and repeat now. As long as you have mana, it's very easy to poke and wave clears Orianna. And if you want to keep them off the minion wave, you can just put your ball all the way back there. If they step up through it, you just W them, and then maybe you pull it back with your E and deal more damage as well. So really, really oppressive once you get kind of that advantage in lane, either off a first kill or item advantage. They really can't step up. So you see here, I can just E through them, damage them again press R because it's back off cooldown follow it up with the W and the damage just kind of stacks off all those abilities work off of each other so you could either use the W before your R so that they're slowed and it's easier to land your R I I prefer to use the R first if I can, especially if it's multiple targets, because it sucks everybody in towards the middle usually, and then when you press your W, you can hit them all again, and they're slowed even further. But, you know, either way works really, really well. It's just kind of what you can land first. Okay, so we almost have our Ludens Tempest. We're running that magical footwear, so we don't quite have our boots yet, but we can walk back to lane here save our TP and our flash if we needed to. Once this uh, lane phase breaks here, um, it could break by either we take enough turret plates and we you know, take down mid, or a bot lane wins really hard and they want to rotate mid. You do side lane eventually as Orianna to grab some farm. It is very easy, you just don't want to keep sitting mid with Orianna. Um, I would just suggest that at least try and go to the side lane and pick up farm that's like at the halfway point or closer just so that you're not sharing too much gold and XP with your bot lane, okay? But because of Ori's strengths, it is better to play her in team fight scenarios. She's not a true like split pushing champion or side laner. It is much more effective to play with her, to siege as a team, to poke as a team. So here we just use that E to go through him and then the Q to go through him. Don't use your W if, if you kind of miss the Q, if you flub it too hard. Just try and make sure you use that W once they're sitting in it. So here, again, now that they're on me, I can use it. Follow it up with Qs. I have my R available. So I'm just going to keep following him with damage here. And we can use the R to finish him off again. Now the champion's down. We want to try and shove the waves, obviously, as much as possible. Your W, you can see with a Q, you can usually start to clear out full backline waves. And then you can also use your Q through the front line to help you auto them down even faster. 
All right, we'll take some more tower plates just so we can get to that Ludens Tempest. If you can get to Ludens Tempest by around 10 minutes, that's a really good goal in your games. Any champion, really, if you can get to that first mythic item uh, or whatever the core item is in your build in the first 10 minutes, that's usually in a you know putting you in a good spot to start to really have some good success in your games, carrying and also being that big damage threat. Okay, so here we can use the Q at range, use the E again just to shield us so we don't take too much damage. We're maxing that W, so he wants to step up. We'll just keep poking him down with autos. You can see how oppressive this becomes as Oriana, the more autos you land. And if they're this low under turret, all you have to do is just put the ball in between them and the minions. They can never step up and touch the minions. Use that that Q to shove waves really fast. He's going to miss two full waves here. We can get even more plates. And this is just how the lane phase will go for you as long as you don't feed early and you don't just mindlessly shove those waves early. Shoving waves early just almost guarantees you're going to get ganked and bring that jungle pressure to camp your lane. Oriana does not really have any escape. She just has that W for a little bit of a speed boost and an E for the shield. Outside of that, you're a prime target. If I was jungling on the enemy team and I saw an Ori mid who's pushed up, I would be licking my chops to always go and gank that Ori. So don't blame it on, oh, I'm getting camped, or oh, the jungler just is focusing me, where's my jungle? If you walk up that far as Ori, you are inviting that type of a play, okay? So just keep that in mind. All right, so we've got our first item. We've got our Sork Shoes. We can start to build into the Archangel Staff as our next core item. So let's just have some fun now with the damage and see what we can do to this uh, this Galio. So again, very basic. We want to try and now that we have all this power, we can just use our QW and our autos to shove waves really quick. And then we can try and poke this guy in the tower. If he does step up, again, you're going to use your E, you're going to use your R, you're going to use your W, and just keep auto and poking them down. The Q's on quite a short cooldown, so you should be able to just poke people down like that eventually. It's, it's really disgusting. Um, just make sure to weave those autos in. Make sure to keep landing that Q, that W, and then you push waves really quick. Unfortunately, Ori's not the greatest roamer, so like even once you push a lane like this and you're hitting tower and you're taking plates, that's probably the preferred play as opposed to going and roaming around the map and like seeing if you can gank bot or gank mid. She doesn't really have a gap closer and she's not the best like face checker into blind bushes. If there was an assassin or somebody like a Kha'Zix, you'll just get exploded. So, unless you're super fed. So just be careful of roaming too much with Ori. I'd recommend instead, you just have fun winning your lane a lot. If somebody like this does walk in, you know, you can deal some damage to them. You could even flash and Q like that. I mean, there's not really any extensive flash plays with Ori. But you can still, once you're ahead, obviously, dish out a lot of damage. Like we talked about in the earlier part of this guide, you do have propensity to always top the damage charts as Ori. She just, uh, you know, scales really well, has a lot of damage and utility in her kit, so uh, the options are on the table there. Okay, guys, that's really it for Oriana. I know we talked about her lane phase a lot. You guys are going to have to dump in a few games to kind of just get used to that ball mechanic and the spacing with, you know, how far and how fast your Q flies, the W radius to damage, you know, the R, how far you can be to cast R. But there are some really cool combos, especially when you add in the whole layer that we haven't really talked about where you can attach the ball to an, an ally champion and still cast all of your abilities like your W or your R on them and you know you put this into other wombo combos on your team whether it's a Malphite jumping in and then you R, you R, and then an Amumu bandages in and R is it's just disgusting when you wombo this with other stuff so have some fun in your games let me know in the comments below if there's any questions and I'll catch you guys in the next one